Hello everybody, I'm Some Loudmouth on the Internet with an opinion. And yes folks, we have made it to episode 11 of Gargoyles the Goliath Chronicles. And this episode is, how you say, the most infamous one of the entire season. Hell, it's one of the most perplexing episodes of any Saturday morning cartoon I have ever seen. This is an episode that's rather, how you say, strange. It's an episode that brings back one of the key villains from the original series. A kind of secret organization known as the Illuminati. The Illuminati were never really overtly shown and were only later in the series confirmed to actually exist. But it always kind of implied that they were pulling the strings behind various events in the series. Key villains like Thalog and David Xanatos, for example, were both members of the Illuminati. You could say that Gargoyles used the Illuminati very similar to the other Wiseman produced show, Young Justice uses the light. Sadly, an organization that once made really cool and mysterious antagonists in this episode have been reduced to a complete and utter joke. Today, I will be delving into To Serve Mankind. It's a cookbook! It's a cookbook! <laughs> Unfortunately, no. To Serve Mankind is not a cookbook. To Serve Mankind is something completely different than that, and completely and utterly whacked. Hang on to your IQs, everyone. We're about to delve into the dumbest episode this season. Let's dig into To Serve Mankind. We open with yet another pretentious voiceover from Goliath. Courage. Virtue. Struggling to do what is right. Gargoyles and humans want to believe that we are always in control. That we can aid our loved ones in any crisis. But there are times when life mocks our pride. That is when we learn humility. And that the greatest of our strengths is the simple will to persevere. What did any of that have to do with the episode that follows? Absolutely nothing. Nada. Zip. It is complete and utter pretentious gibberish. Apparently they think there are more gargoyles in New York City they haven't discovered yet. That's the building right there. No new gargoyles, that's for sure. If there really are more of our kind out here, alone, unprotected, we have to find them. A gargoyle clan that none of you have ever encountered or seen any evidence of for several years? A gargoyle clan that even Xanatos has never been able to find? Give me a break. So they do spot what look like new gargoyles, and of course, Brooklyn reminds everyone of the fact that he's horny, and his primary concern is getting laid. Take care. We have no idea what we shall find here. With any luck, some new friends. New female friends. Hey, totally understandable. Every gargoyle needs to get the rocks off. The new gargoyles take off their faces to reveal they were just dudes in costumes. Friends? <laughs> Not our friends. Monster! So they're like gargoyle furries. Damn, this degeneracy is everywhere! Predictably, the whole thing was a trap and the walls close in on them. You know, I must have entered a glitch in the Matrix, because that scene seemed a little bit familiar. <laughs> nice job, animators. You have scored a whopping four Garfields in the lazy o -meter. All four of them are gassed, and the trio each wake up in different cells, each with a different form of torture to test their endurance. Let me out of here! What are you doing? Yep, they have been kidnapped by the dreaded Illuminati Society and are subjected to do similar tortures as you saw in Revelations from the Hotel Cabal. I guess it's not really any more outlandish than that, so I can give that a pass. We meet the Gargoyles' main captor, who doesn't really have a name, but I'm just going to call him the Crimson Chin. 
Instead of being in a cell, Goliath is strapped into some kind of machine for some kind of weird experiment. Me? Sure. But I am simply executing the will of Egon Pax, whose visionary experiments will transform the world. Ha <laughs> Egon Pax. What a silly name that is. Hope that's the last time we hear that name in this episode. As day hits, all the gargoyles turn to stone while still captured by the Illuminati. And then we finally, after the entire series long build up, get to see the Illuminati's. <laughs> the Illuminati Society's. <laughs> meetings of their secret society! <laughs> Thanks to Chess 6, the revolution in Cosa Verde has begun. Who controls the British crown? Who keeps the metric system down? We do! We do! And you, Doctor, what have you to report? <clears throat> Uh, my experiments with the gargoyles, while admittedly intriguing, are all quite minor in and of themselves. Who holds back the electric car? Who makes the Gutenberg a star? We do. The Crimson Chin reveals that his ultimate goal is to brainwash Goliath into murdering the president of a fictional nation of Latvonia because they're afraid his peace deal will be bad for business. Pax will arrive in New York tonight to address a gathering of world leaders in hope of securing their help toward a permanent peace. Since our front industries supply weapons to all sides in the war, for us, Egon Pax is a very dangerous man. We are steadily progressing toward our one world government. Naturally, with our agents in place. I am excited to announce that this year more people have decided to be homosexuals than ever before in history. Role-playing games are the perfect gateway to embracing Satan and have spread far and wide across the land. Is your assistant ready? Almost. As you know, brainwashing used to take months. But my new technology has reduced the time to hours. So after all that build-up for what the Illuminati really are, that's our answer. A bunch of goth kids dressed up as the Ringwraiths from Lord of the Rings. How is our chintastic friend going to brainwash someone with a will as strong as Goliath? That's easy. By repeating the name of the target over and over and over and over and over again. Responsible for this madness? He is Egon Pax. To save your friends, you must eliminate Egon Pax. Egon Pax. Egon Pax. Egon Pax. Egon Pax. Egon Pax. Wait, that's all you need to do in order to brainwash someone into hating somebody? Hmm. I'm gonna give this a shot. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Chin Face continues to torture Goliath, as well as the audience, by continuing to repeat that stupid fucking name over and over again. To live, Egon Pax must be destroyed! Egon Pax! 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 Brooks Heatherly! Brooks Heatherly! Brooks Heatherly! Brooks Heatherly! Brooks Heatherly. So Goliath finally eventually succumbs to this episode's unique brand of torture, and also seems to agree that Egon Pax must be destroyed. Egon Pax. Egon Pax. About your poor friends. Egon Pax! Egon Pax! You know, I'm actually starting to understand why hearing that fucker's name will drive someone to murderous rage! When all hope seems lost, someone breaks into Broadway's cell to bust him out. Now tell me where my friends are! Where I... Oh, wait, wait! Sanatos? You did this to us? Shut up and listen, Broadway. I'm saving your life, the Illuminati, your hosts here. Accept only the most powerful into their ancient order. Though I occasionally find my membership distasteful, it often proves useful, as it did today. Huh? 
When the fuck did you find your membership to the Illuminati Society distasteful? Xanatos was once willing to risk death by displaying the Illuminati Society's emblem in public. He did not find it distasteful. And there are many other problems here. Like, wouldn't the rest of the Illuminati know the fact that Xanatos harbors the gargoyles? So wouldn't they revoke his access to their cells? This is asinine. Xanatos quickly breaks out the rest of the gargoyles, and they rush to stop Goliath from murdering... some guy whose name escapes me at the moment. Whoever it is certainly doesn't have the initials EP. Brainwashed Goliath attacks Egon Pax's limo from the air, and throws a guy, presumably to his death. Yeah, that would totally break every bone in his body, but whatever, Looney Tunes logic. Goliath, instead of just expanding the hole he already made in the rooftop, decides to make a second hole, in which Goliath finally captures the elusive Egon Pax, who does nothing throughout this episode but speak in platitudes about peace like he's running for Miss America. I do not know why you have attacked me. All my life I have been a man of peace. Clearly also a man of limitless humility. Violence solves nothing. Please, my son, do not do this terrible thing. If not for my sake, then for your own. Oh my god, just kill this guy already. The trio managed somehow to float down from above in order to try to stop Goliath. We're fine! Just put the guy down! Where are they floating down from? Did this episode forget gargoyles can't fly, they can only glide? Maybe they were floating down from Xanatos' helicopter you see later, but it's never made clear. This leads to, you guessed it, repeating this guy's name some more. No! You're trying to confuse me. I only know one truth! Egon Pax must be destroyed! My god, a secret society programming mythical creatures to kill world leaders in order to bring about a new world order. Alex Jones was right all along! Eventually, Goliath is able to break free of the brainwashing, and he decides not to kill he who must not be named. Who, of course, decides to give another speech about how awesome peace is. No, 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 my friend. In the end, by choosing peace over violence, you have succeeded. Let there be no more violence here tonight. Do not make a mockery of all my work. What? What did I almost do? You almost killed the dullest, most boring, and most pretentious character in the history of animation. That's what you almost did. Egon Pax is rescued by his security officers, and apparently the rest of the cops don't have much of his whole peas and non-violence crap, and they start opening fire on the gargoyles. That is until Xanatos mirroring the end of Hunter's Moon comes in his helicopter to rescue them. And apparently there's no reprisal for Xanatos, who foiled the plans of a secret organization that supposedly runs the world, and was willing to assassinate world leaders. This is never mentioned again the rest of the series. It is completely forgotten. So the episode ends on a somber note as they reflect on Goliath's little freakout, ruining all the work they've done to make peace with the humans, and making gargoyles look like total assholes. So what do we do now? The only thing we can do... Tomorrow, we start over. So that was Gargoyles the Goliath Chronicles to Serve Mankind. And holy fuckballs does this episode suck. I want whatever the writers of this episode were smoking. This is the worst of the series, and I'm just amazed at what the fuck I just watched. This episode is biblically idiotic, and the only value it has to laugh at how batshit insane it is. Every single line, every single frame of this episode is dripping with stupidity. The Illuminati Society go from being mysterious antagonists to a parody of what people think secret societies are like. The plot makes no sense whatsoever, with its outlandish brainwashing techniques to the Illuminati's goofy robes that make them look more like the stonecutters from The Simpsons. To how often this episode repeats Egon Pax, to the point where it becomes funny and aggravating at the same time. 
to Egon Pax himself, who is one of the most one-dimensional characters in the history of animation, who speaks in nothing but platitudes. This episode is the lowest of the low. But this episode did succeed in one thing. If this episode intended to brainwash you into hating Egon Pax, it really succeeded. I'm some loudmouth on the internet with an opinion, and Egon Pax must be destroyed! Ah! So thanks to the Dark Conservatarian, Connor Johnson, and my other awesome patrons. And be sure to subscribe for more loudmouth reviews, commentaries, and editorials. Egon Pax, Egon Pax, Egon Pax. Egon Pax, Egon Pax.